Um, well, first of all, thanks everybody for attending. We have quite a bit to cover um, and a pretty full agenda. Um, I'm going to give you an overall status update. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the changes that Gabor made on Drupal.org, which are excellent. Um, talk a little bit more about vision and mission for Drupal Starshot. And then uh, Laurie, Gabor, and I, we've actually spent hours and hours this week trying to break down sort of our vision and mission into work streams and work packages. And we're going to uh, preview that with you. Uh, they're not done, but I think we're at a point where we can uh, yeah, preview it with you and get some feedback. And then uh, Christina, who is our user experience lead, uh, she will uh, walk you through some of the concept wireframes that we have uh, for Drupal Starshot. And we've actually been doing some usability testing uh, with these wireframes as well. And we have some initial feedback on these wireframes. And so we'll cover that. And then we'll kind of lay out our next next steps, essentially. Um, it's like we have a little bit of an agenda of what we want to accomplish in the next few weeks. And uh, we'll walk you through that as well. And then hopefully we'll have time for Q&A um, at the end. Um, by all means, feel free to post things in chat or ask questions. We may also have the Q&A feature available. Um, I'll do my best to pay attention to chat, but I may not always see your message as I'm talking, but I'll try. Um, but uh, if you use the Q&A feature, we'll definitely try and get to those uh, at the very end. So um, for those that are maybe just tuning in, if you want, um, we've made some good progress in the last few weeks. Uh, we announced Starshot, I think it was about a month ago now, at uh, DrupalCon uh, Portland. Uh, since then, uh, we've done a lot of work on organizing everything. We have actually, um, I think I've shown you this last time, but we have like a pretty long list of action items. We're almost at 100. Uh, we've been going through these, um, you know, multiple times a week, really, uh, and, and doing a lot of work on those. Uh, but one of the things that we did is we defined our vision and mission. We also defined a governance model um, and appointed the leadership team that was announced previewed with you last Friday and announced earlier this week. And then this week, we've been really working um, on enabling all of you in the community to get involved um, through these webinars and, and tracks, which I'll talk about in this meeting. Uh, we have one webinar this week, but we have three meet webinars in next week, FYI. Um, so we'll have three Zooms. Uh, we've been working with the presenters on preparing slides and organizing things for you. Uh, so that will be uh, next week. Um, but a lot of work that went into it this week. Um, we're also working on enabling the certified partners. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then we've been defining sort of the experience that we want for Drupal Starshot and specifically focused on the installer um, and the onboarding experience. And then uh, we're going to start working on more defined um, product strategy next week, especially for things beyond the installer and the onboarding. Uh, and how we might be different, how we think about being differentiated in the market compared to other uh, solutions. And then we also want to do some work on a messaging guide and positioning guide. So, like, how would we talk about Drupal Starshot to our target audience? But also, um, how do we think about the competition and how we differentiate ourselves from the competition? How would we capture that as well? So, you know. Pretty high level overview, but hopefully it gives you a sense uh, of what we've been working on. And we're going to deep dive in some of these topics uh, in the next uh, 50 minutes here. Uh, Gabor, as I mentioned, has done a great job uh, updating Drupal.org uh, slash Starshot. It went from a relatively simple landing page to, I don't know, like an engagement hub or something. Uh, Gabor, do you want to add something uh, about that? Yeah, yeah. So you can find all the initiatives under there now, automatic updates, experience builder, etc. You may find the new Drupal at the Edge work that Matt Kleiman and Kevin Quillen are working on to run Drupal in a WebAssembly thing in the browser. And you also find on this page the sign-up form that we changed that now allows you to sign up to news without pledging if you don't have the time or resources. It also has video recordings of previous sessions and interviews and stuff. Uh, it has links to the issue queue of Starshot and the issue queues of initiatives and their 
their meta issues and uh, pointers to Slack and then news and experience builder already they started posting weekly summaries of what they're working on. And we hope that we'll be able to expand that further as more initiatives are starting to um, get more of you involved. Then one of the things that we we'll want you to be involved is to help document how this goes. So it's a lot more uh, information now. It's a lot easier to follow what's going on and to find all the places to be involved with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you want to get involved, it's a good place to start. So thank you, Gibor. Um, all right, so let's uh, dive in. So the vision statement is really unchanged and it's pretty simple, but our, again, our goal is um, to make it easier for site builders, especially site builders that are new to Drupal to easily build and launch uh, open source Drupal sites uh, with Starshot. Um, so that's a vision. And then we have a mission statement, which is a little bit more in depth. And I, I want to walk you through it real quick because I'll connect back to it uh, you know, in a few minutes. Um, so, you know, Drupal Starshot is a fast moving open source product. And so first of all, we want to move fast. And I think we have been moving fast. We obviously want it to be open source. Uh, and then we also want it to feel and act like a product versus maybe Drupal core, which will be more of a framework. Uh, and so we want to package it and promote it as a product uh, and give it a product feel so that it's easy to use. And essentially the product, um, we want to enable site builders without Drupal experience, as I said, to easily build and launch a Drupal site. And then we also want to enable them to extend their site with what we call pre-packaged recipes. And all of this only using their browser. So our vision is that people should not have to use the command line uh, to use Drupal Starshot. Now, if somebody wants to use the command line, that's fine, they can, but it should not be required. Um, and unlike Drupal Core, Drupal Starshot will be much more focused on guiding site builders and it will do that through recipes that implement either common best practices or some state-of-the-art innovations. Um, and all of these will be fast and easy to set up thanks to using smart defaults and minimal steps. And I want to emphasize that we will focus on common best practices on the one hand, and that could be things like, I need a contact form. I don't know, it's things that most sites need. Um, but also there's an opportunity for more uh, state-of-the-art innovation. So that allows us to get into things like responsible AI or, you know, many other things. I'll touch upon this later, but I want to emphasize that it's both of these things that we need to do. Uh, and essentially, um, you know, Drupal CMS, which is kind of the current product name and Starshot is the initiative name. Uh, we'll focus on getting people from install to launch really fast. And so that's something that we want to measure as well um, in terms of maybe time or steps or clicks and success rate. And essentially with the goal to bring new people and contributors into Drupal and into the open web. And so what we've done is we actually started breaking this down in what we call, you know, three epics. Um, we have a working document. I can kind of show this to you. Um, this is what we've been working on. And I'll um, I'll actually walk you to a higher level version of this. Um, you can see uh, some of the work here. But uh, so let me walk you through uh, the details, uh, the slide version of this document. Uh, but the first epic is all about the installation process. And so we want to improve um, the discovery and the installation experience of Drupal Starshot. And we kicked it off by capturing some user stories. And I know this is a little bit tedious, but I think it's the nature of the beast. <laughs> um, and so I have to like walk you through these details a little bit. Um, but essentially we, we said things like, as a new Drupal user, I want it to be easy uh, to discover Drupal Starshot on drupal.org. I want it to be easy to learn about its features compared to other solutions that might exist in the market. I want it to be easy to download Drupal Starshot and get installation instructions. 
That's like one user story that we identified. Another one is as a new user, I want a trial experience. And uh, specifically a trial experience that kind of launches me um, in content creation and page building rather than an installer where I have to configure my SQL or other technical things. So imagine you're a content creator or a marketer and you want to try something, like you don't want to set up my SQL, right? So the trial experience should actually launch them into what exactly they, um, you know, the things that they, they expect to see and want to test. Um, as a new Drupal user, I want to install Drupal Starshot without using the command line. I think I mentioned this. And then from there, we started identifying work packages, if you will, and we call them tracks right now. Um, and the idea is, and we'll talk about this later, the idea is that we can um, you know, assign people or agencies to each of these tracks to go work on them. Now, right now, we have high-level descriptions of these tracks. Uh, for example, uh, and this will connect to that first user story, but we need wireframes and designs and you know, implementations for all of the necessary changes on Drupal.org. So think about updating the download page. Right now you can download Drupal core, but we want it to be possible to download Starshot. Um, we also need sort of an informational section on Starshot on Drupal.org. We need an installation guide. We may have to update the front page and lots of other places we may have to update as well. So that could be like a work package where um, people, um, you know, that we can hopefully find a group of people that can work on it, right? Uh, second track is to actually create sort of a product section on Starshot on Drupal.org. So imagine um, having a section with maybe 10 pages that go into specific features. So imagine, as an example, that we wanted to highlight uh, Starshot's multilingual capabilities. Most likely people would want to, you know, have a dedicated page with more information about multilingual capabilities. So again, for people that want to learn about Starshot. So imagine having a set of pages that go into the, the details of the features of Starshot, uh, possibly with um, competitive comparisons on why, why our features are better than our competitors, but also a two minute promo video or a 10 minutes like longer video on star shots, images, all of these things. So that could be a second track for uh, people to work on. We need to write installation instructions for star shots. Uh, documentation will be very important. Um, and um, I can give an update on that later as well. Um, we want to make it easy for people to evaluate, compare and decide. Um, on sort of the best way to do the trial experience. Uh, trial experiences, uh, you know, come in different shapes and flavors, and we need to define how we might want, how we might our trial experience uh, to work. Um, as Gabor mentioned, we're already exploring an approach that uses WebAssembly or Drupal at the edge, and that was linked from the Starshot page. And what that means is that you somebody could trial Drupal Starshot in their browser without having to set up my SQL or, or a web server or anything really. A completely client-based trial experience that requires no server-side setup, which is potentially pretty powerful. Um, we also need to you know, update the installer of Starshot and we'll show some concept wireframes in a little bit, but um, Right now, if you install Drupal, you end up kind of on a relatively empty site, but we want to expand that installer so that people can select recipes or features. Um, and then those recipes and features will be uh, installed. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, there's also a lot of existing, well, there's a number of existing initiatives like Project Browser, and they actually need uh, quite a bit of work with user experience. Um, I think I may have it here. Um, but we met with the Project Browser team this week, and they have this actually wonderful issue. Um, this is the ID. Um, but the title is a Roadmap to Experimental Project Browser in Drupal Core. 
And you can see how some of the initiatives are starting to get organized. So we have this notion of Starshot blockers um, that people can create, which is great. So if you want to contribute on those, you can just basically click this link and you'll see all the Starshot blockers that we have identified so far. Uh, but maybe more importantly, um, the project browser team has done uh, usability testing uh, at the University of, um, what, which one was it again? Um, uh, Michigan, Michigan, I think, is that right? University of Michigan. And uh, they have like a professional usability lab where people sit behind these mirrored glass um, and can observe people. I've actually been there once. Um, and out of the usability testing of Project Browser came a lot of kind of sub-issues that are kind of this section that I'm highlighting. So the idea and like some of the things are improving uh, status messages, improving uh, logos. Uh, sometimes people were confused by categories as a term. People ask, are these filters or what are these things? Um, those kinds of things. So they're a long list. Uh, but some of these are, I think, relatively simple, um, famous last words. Um, but um, anyway, what we're doing is we're thinking of bundling all these issues into a track. And that's essentially uh, this track six here, uh, which is basically uh, implementing a number of, uh, you know, a collection of usability improvements for Project Browser that ca came out of formal usability uh, testing. And then another track is to add recipes support to Project Browser. Like to date, Project Browser was built really to help people browse modules and and themes uh, too. But this concept of recipes is relatively new. And we have preliminary support for recipes in a Project Browser, but not uh, there's a lot of work to be done there as well. Uh, even things like... If you install a recipe, a recipe may have to have a bit of a configuration wizard. Let's say you install a contact form through a recipe, right? Um, you probably want to set up the email address that the contact form will be used with. So that's a configuration step. And in the case of a contact form, maybe it's easy enough. Uh, but with more complex recipes, you can imagine that we have to think about how does that fit into the installation process. So uh, we actually have a webinar or a Zoom, Super Zoom, whatever we want to call these meetings, a virtual session uh, about this, uh, about Project Browser. I think that's on Monday. Is that right? I think that's Monday. We can look at the calendar to be exact. But um, yes. yeah, we'll go. that's yep. on Monday, right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we'll go into the details of that. So again, so we started from, you know, our our mission statement, we picked three epics. Epic one is installation. We, we're starting to define the user stories. And from the user stories, we're starting to kind of define tracks with that and with the idea that tracks can, um, can be worked on by multiple groups of people. All right, so we have a second track. I'll walk you through this as well. And again, I apologize if this is a bit uh, tedious uh, to go through, but um, yeah, I think we have to. Um, all right, so now imagine somebody installed Drupal or is installing Drupal, I should say, uh, and maybe, you know, discovered Drupal on drupal.org, right? With these user stories, they learned about it, they were able to install it, and they've taken the first steps with the installer. So now at some point, we want to help them configure their website to, so that it does what they want it to do. And we want to guide site builders uh, with these common best practices and innovations, right? That refers to, we want to guide them with common best practices and state-of-the-art innovation. So I'll go a little bit quicker on over this, but um, hopefully you get the idea. And so... Uh, a couple quick user stories is as a new Drupal user, I want Drupal to guide me to the best starting point. For example, Drupal could ask if I want to build a corporate site or a magazine site or you know whatever other kinds of sites we might support and then automatically determine the necessary features 
uh, that are required and suggest additional recipes. Like you could picture this probably as a step in the installation process. It's like, what kind of website do you want to build? And already we can make some choices for our users. Um, but even when people select the type of websites, the next step, we can also ask them what kind of features they want. And there is a set of features like contact form, landing pages. Do you want to feature videos? Do you want to promote events on your website? Do you want to sell products? You want to collect donations as a nonprofit. We can ask these questions too, and um, and then essentially, uh, you know, select recipes that will be installed. So maybe we start with what kind of site, and then what are some of the key features of your site? All right. So now people have selected these, um, and uh, we proceed with those. The next thing people probably want to do is. Um, style their site a bit. And some people might have an existing brand or design system that they'll want to import, so to speak. Uh, but a lot of people may not have a brand or or a design system and they they want to maybe, you know, they may want to see some starting templates that they could start from. Um, so, um, all right. And... Um, once you've selected the starting template as well, maybe we launch you into the site and now we want to guide people to take their first steps. You selected these features, you selected a template, but let's help our users publish their first piece of content or let's help our users invite their first content editor or let's help them set up the site name and these kinds of things, right? So um, the way we are going to approach this uh, is I think very easily we can define a handful of recipes or features that we think we want to offer with high level of certainty. A contact form, like definitely a feature that we want to offer. A blog, a, a blog feature for people that want to add a blog to their site, definitely something that we want to add. Um, now we get into things like maybe a feature for listing products and services very common across all of these kinds of products. So in the next week or so, we can define a handful of features that we know we want, and we can um, we, we can st start working on those. I'll talk about that in a second. And while we work on those, we can do additional user research uh, or do user research to identify what other features we might want to offer. Right, so that's a little bit the concept. It's like, let's pick some that we know we're gonna need and then uh, take a little bit more time to figure out what else we might need. Meanwhile, we can start working on the ones that we know and um, we can start learning. Um, similarly, with the uh, state-of-the-art innovations, which is the second component of what we wanna offer, uh, we wanna start thinking about this uh, and then launch them as uh, tracks as well. So for each of these recipes um, that we want, we are going to launch a track like this as well. And again, with the goal to enable uh, people to work on them. And then for each track, so let's take a blogging feature as an example. We may have to do some user research. We may have to figure out what, what kind of features that need to be in the blogging um, feature. <laughs> Uh, we have to build the recipe, but we also have to set up some integration testing to make sure that it works and keeps working. Um, we may find um, that there is usability problems with it, and we may want to contribute back to the contributed modules that will be behind it. So we have to maybe write some documentation, uh, all of these things. So we have a lot to do um, for each of these features. All right, so again, We'll start with the features we know. We'll launch them relatively soon. We can enable people to start working on them. And we have a lot of things to do for each of those. So we can kind of parallelize the work, if you will. And then now we've people have installed the Drupal, they've configured their site, and now they want to launch their website. And we have some ideas here. Um, but we also decided that maybe this part comes after DrupalCon Barcelona as kind of a future phase. But we have stories like, um, you know, you may be in the trial experience. Now, how do I move 
my site to you know a permanent host whether that's say mysite.myhosting.com or self-hosted on your laptop right that could be another option like how do you go from the trial experience to like taking control of the site because maybe the trial experience is um you know trial.drupal.org or something and you don't want the drupal association to like nuke your your sites after you've spent you know 10 hours working on it but at some point you want to be like all right i feel good about this i want to continue with this i'm going to move it somewhere where it is um maybe more permanent okay um so i have not paid attention to all of the comments in chat i apologize for that so i'm going to okay. maybe look Look at the board. Yeah. yeah, I'm making note of the questions. Yeah. Okay. So we maybe continue with the wireframes. It's probably a good idea. Um, so for the wireframes, I'm going to stop sharing so that Christina can uh, share. And if you haven't met Christina while she's setting up, uh, Christina works for Lullabot, uh, which is obviously a well known Drupal agency in the gracefully offered Christina to work on Starshot. And we're happy to have her because she's been leading all kinds of UX initiatives in Drupal for over seven years. And a lot of the things you love about Drupal, uh, Christina had a, was involved with, like Clara, Olivero, all of these things. Thank you. Go for it, yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's dip into this. Um... This is probably the first page and uh, most of you might have already seen this. Uh, this is, and first, before going deep into uh, into the wireframes, I would like to let you all know, we, when we created this, it was like even before the Dries note, because actually he could have something to show. So we made a lot of assumptions and the most important thing is that the goal for these wireframes was actually put something together so people could see uh, and actually um, work uh, uh, from something tangible, something that already had something in there. So it's really important to say that nothing that you see here is set in stone. So it's a work in progress and a work to trigger conversations. And one of the most important one, as you are uh, actually uh, listening in a lot of places, is how we actually... Uh, place Drupal CMS compared to core and Drupal CMS itself for new users that might not be um, aware or know uh, Drupal core or know the Drupal community uh, well enough. So we need to put the two of them in balance. And this is the first wireframe that we worked on. And in here, we were trying to find this balance from the recommended one or the new one or the one that you really want is the Drupal CMS. But still, if you know what you're doing, you might want core. And at the same time, we have to define what each of the things are, what are the heuristics for each of them, what things go in one and not in the other and the other way around. And um, not the other way around, because in theory, like uh, Drupal core uh, and Drupal CMS are going to have uh, well, don't want to get into that. Anyway, in here, we try to go into a way um, to explain how the two of them are um, for uh, any, both of the target users, for people with experience and people without experience. We actually didn't share these ones because in here, we were trying to get a little bit deeper to explain, okay, this is... Uh, landing page for somebody that might be more technical. This is a landing page for somebody that might have more marketing skills. But because we didn't have enough definition for each of them, we didn't uh, went further in this. What we did in here is starting the, uh, the definition of uh, what the installer could look like. Uh, what we want is that you get fast from the installation or the starting point to actually have a running site that is actually the thing that you need or that you think that you need or you can start exploring things. So the first page is basically um, a template, but the, like a site template, a high level template where you can actually choose either from a blank canvas or choose something that it's already defined. 
uh, or you can even uh, browse for more. The second one would be, okay, I've already defined the big um, overview, the big uh, level, and then I want to go a little bit deeper and choose a few of these uh, different uh, recipes. And these recipes could be content types or the, the contact form or anything, or you can just skip it and decide all of this later because you want to choose more things maybe, or you still don't know. Then this would be like the first landing page of is the first you can call it landing dashboard whatever and in here as you can see this is really focused on um a builder somebody that is building a site and you can even find here uh the option to actually finish your site or install more things or the first steps that the site builder would be which is creating defining content types defining categories adding media and anything that you might need but what if about that moment when you start uh, researching and you want to start browsing and finding more recipes or more, more things to install? You have this option and you would have, this is the first exploration that we did where we have like several things that are digestible for somebody that might not have a lot of Drupal experience and they are recon um, recognizable. And at the same time, you can actually click and uh, get some more information without leaving the place that you are right now, not leaving the context uh, that you were. Where you are browsing, you choose, you get more um, information, you select this one or maybe not, you go and get more information. You will see here that, for example, we have this popular option here. Uh, does it mean that we will have that in Drupal Core, uh, sorry, in Drupal.org? No, it means that this is here to trigger the conversation to see if that's something that people would like to have. If it is something that we would like to have, we can start the conversation about how we actually do that. Does it mean that it will happen? No, it means that this is actually triggering the conversation, which are the dependencies, the details. If we need images, it means that maybe we need screenshots for each of them. So this is the main goal behind the wireframes. And those are the wireframes themselves. Awesome, thank you. Um, let me reshare my screen. So we actually, uh, well, actually, Lauri did some of this uh, research uh, already with some users at Drupalcom Portland. And overall, um, it was real, uh, well received. Um, it was mainly tested with Drupal users, people, uh, there were, uh, it was with four people so far. Uh, one of them was, had more like 10 years of experience in Drupal. Some others were junior developers. Uh, some of the things that we discovered or we, uh, clearly saw from this initial set of wireframes is that there was some confusion about the positioning between the Drupal CMS against Drupal core. What is what, which is one, there was some confusion about, uh, being the Drupal CMS, the more powerful, just for bigger sites, then I'm gonna I'm going to choose just core, which is a simple one. But then when we move forward, they understood that. So we need to um, work uh, and um, find uh, better ways uh, to actually uh, position all that. And we also need to expand the research with people that is not that familiar with Drupal that has these all preconceived. Um, assumptions from from Drupal. So that's a work happening. Yeah, great, we're thank working, you. We're working with the Promote Drupal initiative to uh, to refine that messaging, yeah. Yep, we have a lot of work to do, obviously, but um, great progress is being made. And I love that we use a design first approach where we start with, um, you know, concept wireframes, we test them with actual users, and we want to test it with many more users and keep refining it uh, before we jump into sort of the implementation step, uh, if you will. So trying to use best practices, if you will, uh, industry best practices for that. Now, um, what, what are some of our next steps here? So first, we'll talk about the next steps for the tracks. And so um, we, we want to do a few things. One, if I jump to the working doc, um, you can see these are the seven tracks for the installation um, section, Epic. 
And obviously each track is only, you know, a sentence or two sentences. Plus each of each of the all of this information lives in a Google Doc, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, it's our internal working doc. So our next step is essentially to move all of this information uh, out of the Google Doc to Drupal.org into the Starshot issue queues. And we will create an issue for each track. So there will be seven issues for these tracks. And then for each of the tracks, we also want to expand uh, this information. We want to, you know, flush it out more, define the scope a bit better. Um, we might specify what skill sets we believe we need uh, on this track. Uh, we might also specify how critical it is uh, this this track and if there's dependencies on other tracks like some tracks um, might be in the critical path and therefore we need to make sure we resource them with people that can spend sufficient time on making progress or we will miss our you know goal uh, other tracks can maybe start a little bit later or are maybe um, less in the critical path and we can specify that as well and hopefully uh, we can then start to, you know, map or match uh, either um, certified partners or volunteers, individual contributors uh, to these different tracks. As I mentioned, we will do the same with um, some of the initial ideas that we have for common best practices, like maybe these things. Again, we're still finalizing these, but we're thinking contact forum blogs, scheduling events, listing of services or products, portfolio feature, uh, and uh, are kind of the five knowns that we want to do. And we're turning each of those in a track uh, so that people can start building the recipes uh, for those as well. So um, that's what we're going to do next. Um, you know, we think we can uh, make a lot of progress on this next week and have those in the issue queue by the end of next week. So we'll have an initial set of tracks in the issue queue uh, and hopefully... Um, once it's in the issue queue, it will be easier for people to get feedback, to get involved, all of these things. And obviously, we're going to have to define more tracks. <laughs> um, we're going to have more than five features, for example, uh, as part of the installer. So there's there's more to come. But we're kind of focused on, instead of flushing everything out right now, we're trying to balance flushing things out sufficiently and then kind of getting everybody involved versus uh, doing too much behind closed doors. So we're trying to just optimize things uh, for efficiency here. And then uh, Christina has some next steps for the wireframes as well. Yeah, so uh, as you can see here, there is this uh, URL where you uh, we actually posted these wireframes that you just saw. Uh, and with a little bit of explanation for each of the the pages, and you can uh, give us some feedback in there if you haven't given it already on any other issue or uh, in Slack and either of the channels of each of the the initiative project browser or recipes or or on the promote Drupal. So. Um, this issue is open already. You can go in there and uh, post any of the feedback that you, you may have, or even if you want to help us, uh, please uh, let us know in there. We are looking for help. Great. And I'm just, yeah. just going to open also, the issue. So here, yeah, here it is exactly. if people want to wanna see it. Yeah, so basically put a number on each of them so we don't confuse it because by experience, it's usually the first one, the second one, no, no, number, whatever. So we're going to also try to create a working group for user researchers and designers to help uh, for the next steps on every track. But um, it means that ideally some person could work on several of the tracks because the knowledge will be probably shared. So uh, we want to announce on the Slack channel uh, and ideally a first meeting and working uh, meeting. Uh, the thing is that we need to define exactly if we have the UX of research or design channel separated from the marketing one, because they are really close to each other, especially on this initial point. And we need to still to define that and see how we all call, uh, can come together and collaborate together in a better way. So we don't separate things from it, from one another. Right back to me, Christina. Yes. Yeah. All yours. Okay. Yeah. 
Great. So we're kind of wrapping up here and then we'll jump into Q&A. By the way, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but uh, we tried to apply some of the new um, brands to our slides, the brand that we announced at DrupalCon, and we are also kind of blending it in with the Starshot vibes. Um, thank you to Ash for, for doing that, um, making our slides look better. Um, we will share actually the templates that we use if people want to reuse um, you know, this, uh, this template in Google Slides, then you can for your own slides. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was just a side note. Um, so we have a couple of next steps here. So again, next week, we'll have three webinars where we're going to do deep dives on Project Browser is one. We're going to do a deep dive on Recipes, and we're going to do a deep dive on auto automatic updates. And for each of those, we'll kind of get you up to speed. We'll do a demo, and then we'll talk extensively about how you can get involved. So we'll open up issues, point to issues, uh, these kinds of things. And hopefully that will be, um, you know, very productive in terms of getting people uh, involved in these things. Uh, we're grooming a lot of issues now so that these meetings can be um, kind of well organized. Um, next week, you know, the Starship leadership team, so Gabor, Lori, Christina, Pam, Tim, and myself, we're also going to draft a product strategy document. This will be a document that talks about who's our target audience, um, you know, where do we play, who do we want to appeal to, how do we want to be differentiated compared to other solutions, what are the features that we need to do that. Um, and that's going to be important as well, obviously, in order to guide all of the work that we do. We hope to spend a lot of time working on this. We have set aside hours of time, actually, next week uh, to work on this. And then, by the way, I'm also going to be at uh, the Drupal Jam in the Netherlands, uh, which is one of the largest European events. Um, talking about Starshot, hope to see some of you there. But um, after that, the week after, um, most of us will be um, at Dev Days in uh, Bulgaria. And we have a two-day core committer meeting uh, where we will talk extensively about Drupal core, but also Starshot. And we want to preview and, and discuss this product strategy draft that we're making next week. The, the week after that, we want to preview and discuss it with the core committers because uh, we have to do a lot of alignment, what goes in core, what goes in Starshot, all these kinds of things. Um, then we'll talk about it at Dev Days with all of the attendees at Dev Days. So we'll share it with them sort of almost in real time. And then once we come back from Dev Days, we will do another Zoom, a public Zoom like this, where we can walk all of you through it as well. And we'll we'll do a Zoom, but we'll also do a blog uh, you know, make sure we communicate it widely and well. And that strategy, that product strategy, can then be used by all of the contributors. Like as you make decisions, maybe when you're building a recipe, you can keep this product strategy in mind when you have to make trade-offs or decisions um, like that. All right. So again, next week we draft it. The week after we review it and discuss it with the core committers. And hopefully then in two weeks from now, we'll be able to share what we have with you. Might not be complete, but we hope to have a lot uh, that we can talk about. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to publish the initial batch of tracks on Drupal.org by the end of next week. So that the week after, um, you know, during Dev Days, we can start recruiting track leaders. I didn't mention this, but I should. <laughs> We think that every track will need to have some kind of leader, leader, maybe one or two or three leaders. And the reason is we need to go fast on these tracks. And so we can just go around and around and around. And we want to empower a track lead to make decisions for the track. And so what we need to do is we'll have the tracks. We can start discussing them uh, at the end of next week, but we'll also need to recruit track leaders. So that's something that all of you can think about if you're particularly excited about uh, anything that I mentioned, any of these tracks. Um, we'll figure out a process that you can basically raise your hand and, and volunteer to be a track lead. Uh, and we want to empower people to make decisions 
swiftly, so to speak. Um, we're also going to be working with the Drupal Association to try and match some of these tracks to agencies. Like there might be certain tracks that are perfect for a Drupal agency to take on. Like an agency may have a front-end developer, a designer, um, you know, a couple back-end developers, and they may say, hey, we can build this track. And we're willing to spend two or three months working on it with three or four people. And we might make them the track lead. That doesn't mean others can't collaborate, uh, but they, the agency might be the track lead, and then uh, other people can, uh, you know, help and support them. So we have a lot to figure out here. Uh, so expect us to give some more clarity on that as well in the coming weeks. Um, I think that's what I had. So with that, I think we should do Q and A. If you want to get involved again, you can go to this uh, Drupal.org slash starshot. You can actually remove the about. It will automatically redirect. There you go. <laughs> and uh, you'll find when the next sessions are that I mentioned, the dates, you can add a button, click a button and it will be added to your um, calendar, if you will. You can find the issues, both the Starshot blockers as other uh, issue queues. Uh, you can find the information to get onto the Starshot Slack channel as well. So um, all the things you want to know are probably on this page. If they're not, we should definitely ping a board. <laughs> and he'll probably add it to it in 30 minutes. All right. With yeah, that, while, let's do Q&A. <laughs> yeah, while you were talking, I added the meet in person section about the events. That there you will, go. Um, improved. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of questions. Um, okay. One of the questions is, um, how do we deal with a dozen different visions for what each feature looks like? If there's only one, it will favor very complicated solutions that try to do too much for novices. Luke McCormick asks. I can, I can try and answer that. So like uh, mm -hmm. my vision right now for Starshot is that um, like that we have some opinionated recipes that ship with Starshot, so to speak. So imagine in Starshot, Starshot, we will recommend certain recipes and we can we will make opinionated decisions on what these best practices are. Now, in a future version, I think of it as V2, we want to allow everyone in the world to create recipes. And we want to also provide a path for people to find these recipes. So there might be you know, multiple recipes that implement the same thing um, in different means. Uh, but the out-of-the-box experience should be, in my opinion, a set of opinionated recipes that we promote first and foremost, and only secondary, if you will, um, can people uh, find other recipes. The way we're going to be opinionated is by collaborating with these track leads. Um, and yeah, that will require some discussion. So we may have to, well, we most definitely will have to make some trade-offs. Um, and that's going to be part of the work that's ahead of us. All right. So there's two questions about target audience. Mikhail asked, who is the target audience? Uh, they are from the UK. And Drupal is used mainly by government. And Russ asked, uh, who makes the decisions to choose a CMS? How do we target them with this initiative? Yeah, the target audience. So we've done some work on this. Um, and I showed it briefly in the Dries note. Um, probably would have made sense to show it in this deck as well. Um, it will definitely be part of the product strategy that we're working on next week. And so we'll definitely talk more about it. But in essence, it's the um, it's a site builder persona. And we have defined um, what they can and cannot do. As an example, we have said um, they're not comfortable using the command line, as an example. You know, and that's why one of the design criteria is everything should be possible in the browser without having to use the command line. So, but the the target audience for the product is the site builder uh, as well. And we even specified what is a site builder. And so we went a level deeper and we have like sub personas of the site builder all the way from uh, like a low code site builder to what borders a junior developer. But we'll go into the details of that. I think it's a great question and we need to we need to special, uh, you know, specialize that or clarify that. Now, I want to make a distinction between the target persona of the product that can be very different 
than between quotes, the buyer of the products. So it might be a CMO or it might be a CTO or it might be you know, other people in an organization that decide on which technology to adopt. And they select the technology, they built a website and then they hand it off, if you will, to the site builder, you know, to use it in their day to day. And so as part of our marketing efforts, we do need to have a content that targets many different personas, including senior leadership roles like a CMO and a CTO. We'll have to explain why Drupal Starshot is great for marketers, and we have to explain to IT people why Drupal Starshot is secure, scalable, uh, reliable, all of these things. Um, and then there's a lot of roles in between that, all the way from content creators that we need to convince about Drupal Starshot, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, there's a distinction between who ends up using the product on a day-to-day -day basis and who actually selects the product as many I mean, many of you work at digital agencies, so I'm sure you've seen this and you're familiar with it. Uh, and the the Promote Drupal uh, team uh, and, and the marketing committee uh, has done a lot of great work, actually, on identifying all the different personas that we need to uh, talk to, that we need to get in front of and reach out to in terms of content and presence at conferences, all of these things. So uh, maybe I'll pause here. Hopefully that's a, a, a good first answer to that question. Sure. Uh, sure. And maybe one more thing. Sorry, Gabor, because I know the question said um, that the person, was it Luke, uh, works in government and we're not necessarily thinking too much about verticals. Like we, you know, I think of Drupal as a global solution that's used in pretty much any industry. I mean, it's obviously strong in government and higher ed. Uh, but it's in many industries and we want to build something that appeals to different industries. So. So then Julio as Starshot will have the option to be headless. <laughs> so headless is important, but it's not the number one goal for Starshot. So like we're not building something, we're building something for site builders. Well, site builders aren't necessarily asking for a headless. Now, I say that at the same time, um, the way we're building Starshot can actually make Drupal a, head, a better headless product. Um, like I can give you an example, but the experience builder will be a key part of Starshot. Um, and the improvements that they're making with experience builder over layout builder or paragraphs is that it will actually be better at exporting um, sort of the underlying data structure uh, in a headless format than what I believe our current solutions do. So making working on Starshot, it's making Drupal better at headless isn't sort of a primary goal, but I think um, we're also like trying to build something that's robust and future proof. Frankly, that's these are important to us. And because we want something that's future proof, we will actually end up making it better for headless. Yeah, I think the the inherent approach of Drupal to have this structured data that you can build around makes it uh, makes it much easier to make it headless. Even with like, if we have all of those features, the headless capabilities are still possible to add. So none of the components that we plan for are planned to make it harder to do headless. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, totally possible. Yeah, I think uh, we also have a lot of developers contributing, which I'm sure they will want to make sure that that works well, you know, so. So Joao asks, what is more important for Starshot 1.0, sticking to 2024 or having a product that will make people currently looking at Django, WordPress, or left Drupal decide to go with Drupal instead? Mm. What's more important? I mean, I think the first impression matters and um, I don't know, we'll have to evaluate that, I think, but I think we want the first version to be well received, you know, and so if we're not ready, I think we'll have to push the, the goal, uh, the, th the timeline, but we're not, we're not talking about pushing a timeline right now. We're trying to <laughs> make something great and uh, ship it. We are we are descoping things like the way I spoke about recipes as an example, like I would be totally happy with a V one of Starshot that has 
so let's say 20 out of the box recipes um, without a recipe browser that allows you to browse recipes on drupal.org or like con contributed recipes that could be in 1.1 1 .1. and so one of the things we'll have to do because the timeline is very aggressive we'll have to we'll have to say no to a lot of things it doesn't mean no forever it just means no for version one so and at, at the, the reason i'm a little bit waffling i guess is because the next you know few weeks we're gonna flesh out what you know we're still fleshing out all of the work that we need to do and until we flesh it out more and unless we know how we can you know resource some of the work like who steps up to to drive some of these tracks we, we don't really know how fast we can go you know so it depends a little bit on um the details of us fleshing it out as well as how many people step up to help so i'll get a better sense of timelines uh in the in the weeks ahead all right so also with for the fast implementation how do we balance moving fast with work that is happening on modules that are or will be in core so that is actually one of the topics that we'll talk about at drupal dev days in um i guess you know a week is it a week it's kind of a week from now like yeah. said, you know 10 days from now yeah so we need to talk to the to the other core committers and we need to make a plan and I promise you, we'll circle back with you, um, like you know, less than two weeks, I guess. Um, but it's it's a complicated topic, um, and you know, we need to get into the the weeds, the details of it, and uh, come back with with uh, with some practical strategies to do that. All right. And then for the future innovation, how will we accommodate different and changing views about what are best practices? Like how do we change Starshot? Yeah. Like what 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 happens if best practices change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to change too. You know, I think it's natural. Like at one point, um FlexiNote, which probably not many of you know, was a best practice. <laughs> and that became CCK. You know, and then CCK became the best practice. I mean, you know, things evolve, things change, and when that happens, we will have to adjust. I think the goal is to pay attention um, to the trends and best practices, and make sure that we always have the latest and greatest best practices in in Starshot. I think that's part of the job, so to speak, and I, we should expect them to change. Is is I guess what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what I would add technically is that Starshot will be basically a combination of starter recipes and additional recipes that are installed with Project Browser and the Package Manager part of Automatic Updates. And so we can change the new starter recipes when we think that there's something new. The existing mm -hmm. installations will keep using whatever they use, so will not disrupt however they are set up. So it's similar to how you would set up a site right now. You would keep con continue using what you had. And the new sites will get the new best practices, and the sites that install the new recipes will also get the new best practices. So I think that's what that's the technology answer. So here's another question of how is Starshot relevant for existing Drupal sites, and how do we leverage the existing install base to promote Starshot? Um I mean, it's relevant in the sense a project browser and recipes will be available to existing Drupal sites. So let's say my site, which is what, probably 20 years old, <laughs> my Drupal site, I'll be able to go into the project browser and I'll be able to install recipes that ship with Starshot. So if you already have a site, you don't need the installer experience of Starshot, but we will still expose project browser automatic updates and recipes to all of all of those sites. So I think, um, I think it's still beneficial. I'm not sure if that was a question. Maybe I misunderstood the question, but that's yeah. how, how I interpreted it. Yeah, I think the improvements that we are making to core and the contributed projects will will be applicable to all those sites. So no. they can, and also the recipes they will be able to install because that's already in Drupal 10.3. So they don't need yeah. to have 
Should install the recipes. Yeah, the recipe system is, I mean, it sounds simple, maybe recipes, <laughs> but uh, the engineering work that's going on under the hood um, to, to make it work on new and like existing website is pretty interesting and pretty advanced. So if you're interested in that, join us next Monday um, and we can go into some of the details there. So lots of questions about documentation. So Mike mm -hmm. says, what's the plan for documentation? Um, yeah. um, somebody said that we should add sample videos and other, other guidance and the product to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so documentation is super, super important. Mark, I have a lot of conviction that we need great documentation. I also have a lot of conviction that we need to improve not, not only write documentation for Starshot, uh, but also improve the existing documentation that we have for Drupal. And that goes from end user documentation to developer documentation. Um, we've been talking about this with the core committers. I've been talking about this with the Drupal association as well. So I've been, and, you know, and, yeah, been soliciting input and feedback and uh, we are going to um, invest in documentation. Um, the current thinking, I'm, I'm happy to share kind of, you know, be transparent and share some of the current thinking. My, and it, maybe I should say it's kind of my current thinking, but I think there's alignment, at least from some people, um, is that we need a documentation lead in Drupal. Somebody that wakes up every morning thinking about how we make amazing documentation but also someone that's empowered to drive documentation changes. And that could be removing or archiving, I should say, old documentation, um, deciding on what documentation tools we want to use, as well as build a team of documentation contributors. So I think what we're lacking right now is sort of, and I hope I'm not offending anyone when I say that, uh, but I think what we're lacking right now is like strong documentation leadership. And in my mind, what we need is somebody full-time for at least 18 months to come in and just work on this as a full-time job. Obviously not single-handedly, but with the idea to build out a, you know, a community of contribution of contributors that want to help with documentation and so I've been talking to T1 and T2, that's Tim Doyle and Tim Lennon, uh, the Drupal Association CEO and CTO, um, about starting a fundraising campaign so that we can hire a full-time documentation lead. And again, I'll continue to be very transparent. Uh, I think that might be a great staff role for the Drupal Association, because I actually think of documentation the work that we need to do, I think of it as important for Drupal core, but not only Drupal core, important for Drupal star shots, but not only for Drupal core and Drupal star shots, but also important for other aspects of uh, Drupal. So in terms of governance, I think it's actually a more global role, not a core committer or star shot leadership role. Maybe there is like documentation people on the core committer team and, and the star shot leadership team, but I also think there is like a global overarching gap in documentation leadership. And so one idea that we have is to, can we start a fundraising campaign? Um, and once we have raised enough money and that money can come from anyone, including, um, you know, organizations, obviously, can we hire somebody and employ somebody for, you know, 18 months, two years, that kind of thing, and then build a team around that person. So that's the current thinking. And um, yeah, I'm sorry for maybe putting T1 and T2 on the spot <laughs> about these things. And uh, I, I can promise that's what we do, but I can promise you that um, we will continue to talk about it and that we figure out a path to get documentation in better shape. All right, uh, will there be some good themes? Like themes, like um, templates? Yes. Um, we have not talked about that, but um, as you could tell from my um, 
you know, from the user stories that I ran through, like we do think theming is really important. I mean, usually people that are looking around for a content management system, they have a vision. They have a picture in their head of what they want to build. And the picture usually involves some some element of style and design. So we need to figure out how we can enable them to style uh, their Drupal site, you know, so that it matches what they have in, in, in their mind. Um, and obviously the reason we evolved Layout Builder to Experience Builder is because we we wanted to incorporate a number of things, but one of those things was uh, styling and theming of pages, you know? So we're on a mission to make it easier for people to theme or style their Drupal, con their pages and their Drupal sites, all from within the browser. Details, I think we will, um, you know, talk about in future meetings. We also have an experience builder webinar <laughs> it's not next week, but it's the week after next. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Christina and, and Lori and others who've been working on that as well uh, can maybe go into some more details there. So next one, what's the plan for forward moving compatibility? What about breaking features, different versions? So I think we had the, the car analogy for this, right? Yeah, we actually... We, Gabor and I had a conversation with the recipe um, initiative leaders yesterday, and this is a, a topic that they'll talk about on Monday, but um, like what a recipe does is it actually, it's kind of a one-time thing. Like it helps you install things and configure things. Um, but after you've done that, and it's super valuable in that sense, because we can bottle up years and years of experience that's in the heads of senior developers into a recipe. <laughs> uh, we can bundle all of these best practices that are in people's heads in a recipe, and we can really eliminate, if you will, for new users, the whole process of learning, which modules should I use? How do I configure them? All of these things, recipes will make easier, but what a recipe won't do is provide a special upgrade path or something. So for upgrading, your site after you install the recipe, you'll be um, basically, you know, using the regular update process the way you update your Drupal sites today. And again, separately, we're trying to make that easier uh, using automatic updates as an initiative. But um, so basically, you install a recipe once, and then you upgrade the way you upgrade anything else in Drupal. Yeah, so recipes get you there much faster, but then it's yours, and you, and and uh, we don't double with changing your site anymore. That's right. Um, yeah. So Dallas asks, how do you see the Starshot initiative influencing Drupal's market position relative to other CMS platforms? Uh, I think it's a great question, uh, an important question for us to be able to answer, and I I think a lot of this I'll be able to speak about more. Um, eloquently after we went through the product strategy uh, work in the next couple of weeks. So I, I want to do that collaboratively with the other leadership members as well as, you know, get input from the core committers. Um, but answering the question, like what makes Drupal Starshot different, not only from Drupal core, but also from other competitors in the market is a key thing for us to figure out. You know, we need to find what will Drupal set apart, what will we need to define what will set Drupal Starshot apart and how it might impact the market. So great question. Um, allow me to circle back to that um, you know, in a few weeks. Now I will what I will say now is that we have a lot of amazing advantages today that we are gonna continue to bring forward and promote. You know, the fact that Drupal is secure and scalable. The fact that Drupal is among the most accessible CMSs, if not the most accessible CMS, these are all going to be, you know, one of the best multilingual CMSs in the world. Like all of these benefits that we know that are true today, will be true with Starshot too, you know, or at least we hope to make that true with Starshot. But on top of that, we will hopefully find additional differentiators by leveraging 
um, you know, recipes, or put differently by leveraging contributed modules and innovations from the community and by promoting them in Drupal Starshot. So. All right. Um, we need to we need to convey the difference between the two versions, Parax. Clearly, how do you think we will achieve this? I think it's related. Sorry, the two versions, like Drupal Core and yeah, Core and CMS. St yeah. yeah. So we started doing that with the concept wireframes that um, Christina showed. Um, so the way we see it is that Drupal Starshot is what we want to promote the most because it's really designed for people new to Drupal and providing them a great onboarding and learning experience for Drupal. All right, so we want to drive people to Drupal CMS, which we think of as more of a product a productized version of Drupal optimized for all the things that I just said. Um, and the target persona is site builders and maybe junior developers. But for Drupal core, we can now evolve Drupal core slightly differently, right? Where it becomes more of a framework or a tool for people that are already Drupal experts. They know things about Drupal and they want to do it, you know, their way, you know? And so Drupal core will be positioned most likely. And again, this is what we'll talk with the core committers about as well. Um, it will be positioned as more technical, more for experts, uh, more for senior developers that want to start with more of a blank canvas, so to speak, um, than Drupal Starshot. And we'll have to make that really clear, but it's something that we can do because it's a pattern that exists everywhere in software. You know, you think about, and I think we talked about this a little bit already in the last meeting, but you think about Ubuntu. They have different flavors of Ubuntu. You have like Ubuntu Core, which is basically, I think, like the bare minimum version. And then you have Ubuntu Desktop and you have Ubuntu, other Ubuntus. <laughs> and in a way, maybe you have the same thing. And I'm not a front-end developer, but like you have React uh, and then you have Next.js, which is built on React. You know, so it's, Anyway, these are just two examples, but like there's many examples of this in software where you have two versions um, and they're comp like they're built on top of each other. That's a big thing you have to understand. They're not forks from one another, but like, um, and so I, I feel pretty confident that we can help people understand the difference. So. All right. So since we are targeting this at the ambitious site builder persona, will there be some kind of product feedback mechanism that's not bumping people in the issue queue? Uh, more yeah. yeah, I think it's important because um, we want to build it for site builders. So that's why already you can hopefully tell from, from this um, Zoom that we have an, an emphasis on user testing and user research. Um, and like we want to do more of that and continue to do more of that. Um, I've also um, mentioned that we will be creating a um, Starshot Council or advisory board. And some of the members on that advisory board will be site builders. Like we need our target persona on our advisory board as an example, uh, so they can guide us uh, along the way. Uh, so yeah, we, we want to really listen to the the target user. And that's actually a challenge sometimes in Drupal because we do a lot of the work in issue queues, which is uh, there's a lot of like very technical people in the issue queue that aren't necessarily the target audience and that have good ideas, great ideas. Uh, but we need to be able to balance those ideas with what the actual target users say and want as well. So that will be a tricky exercise. Um, but this is exactly the job of product leaders and product management. And so we need to empower product managers and usability and user researchers, actually not just product managers, also user researchers to between quotes to do their job and listen to the right people and then make the right decisions. I'm not saying we have to ignore technical people or, you know, like they have important things to say and obviously often a valuable feedback. We just need to balance these things well. All right. Uh, so Greg said in chat that he has an involved question that he wants to ask live. So if go for it. Greg. 
Yeah, sorry, I'll try to explain uh, my train of thought. And it, it touches on a couple of questions that were asked, the one uh, that had to do with uh, de uh, decoupled and then mm -hmm. the one about the differences between the two products. So uh, it goes back to the wireframes, and I understand that it's a wireframe, uh, not a final product of the, the landing page, the homepage. Uh, and, and I think it's a good um, sort of like a subtle change that we made the CMS slightly bigger to emphasize that that's the default or what we are driving people to. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was a new person coming to Drupal or I just Googled and found out that Drupal is a thing and then I I, I went to the source to find uh, uh, like an, an entry point to it, I'm presented now with two options, mm -hmm. right? And it's pretty obvious that one uh, from the wording that is on the wireframe, that one is targeted for developers and the other one is uh, sort of like uh, easier but now, uh, as a person that doesn't know anything about Drupal, I'm sort of like I have a feeling that if I choose one or the other, that I'm locked out from features that one or the other gives, um, uh, provides. While the fact is that one thing is uh, built on top of the other. So when you select one thing, you also get the other thing. Um, how do we communicate that, that, you know, um, it, it doesn't like, or in the, 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 the scenario where you said that the the target audience is a borderline junior developer, uh, and he's like, "I'm not ready to select core now. I'll go mm -hmm. with the easier version, but will that block me later from you know doing more advanced things like decoupled? How do we make that clear? We yeah. we, disti we, we distinguish between the two, but how do we explain at the same time that you're not missing out? It it will not right. block you into one single you know yeah. yeah I hope I I'm, think, I'm able... you know, it's a great point. Um, maybe not a question. I guess it is a question, <laughs> but we need to make yeah, it clear. Yeah, Greg, we need to make it clear. No, no, and I, I think we can. Sorry, sorry. The question, the question. If oh. you need a question, there is that. No. Has that has that been thought, um, and and you know, be put in the plan of you know as we are building the wireframe into an actual thing. That's the yes. question. Yeah, that is part of the plan to make it really clear, and it is kind of in the wireframes today. And we have done some testing on on the wireframes, and to some people it was not clear. <laughs> so, like, it is part of the in the it's in the plan because we're testing it already. Um, but we we're still working on, um, you know, making sure it's crystal clear. Yeah, so, thanks. Yeah, no, it's a good point, and it, it's worth re reemphasizing. Like, you can start with either and get to the same place, you know. Um, it's like both are good choices. Um, the same recipes you can install on Drupal core. I mean, Starshot is basically Drupal core plus some things. And if you do our job well, actually the difference between Drupal core and Starshot might in time actually disappear or, you know, yeah, get exactly really small. Yeah. yeah. We don't know Thanks. exactly. It's hard to predict the future, but like, you know, I could see a world where, we built a lot of things for Drupal Starshot, and then more and more of these things end up in Drupal Core. And the, now the Delta, maybe we talked a little bit about this in the previous um, Zoom as well. But like, it could actually be the same code base, frankly, and just diff two different ways of talking about the same code base. You know, it's probably a little hypothetical and philosophical right now. Um, but yes, the difference could end up being relatively small. Yeah, Starshot is not about adding those modules into core. It's about making the, the discovery and installation of those recipes easier. And so once core does that, we don't need to add everything into core anymore because we'll have a very easy way to provide these use case specific recipes and then add headless capabilities on top or add commerce on top or add all kinds of subscriptions on top or other things on top. Um, yeah, That's so... Right. Um, yeah, maybe to, to add something like it, the difference main, like what it recommends in the installer, honestly, like people ask about headless and are maybe worried about headless, but imagine Drupal core with project browser and then a whole bunch of headless recipes. Like we would not promote them in Starshot because for Starshot, we want to target site builders that aren't developers. But for core, yeah, maybe we promote a bunch of headless recipes and that would be amazing for core, you know? 
All right, so T2 shared a few times in chat the form that the Drupal Association set up for uh, certified partners to for matchmaking with uh, Starshot, but there's another question of if you have a plan for the selection process for site builders in the Starshot Council. Yeah, so right now um, the plan is basically for the, so I've asked the Drupal Association to help or to drive, I should say, the selection process of who's on the um, Starshot Council. The reason I've asked them is because uh, they're in touch with certified partners, uh, they're in touch with site builders, and I felt it was a good idea to uh, you know, have other people involved, frankly. And so if you're interested and you want to be considered for the uh, Starshot Council, I would say reach out to um, Tim Doyle at the Drupal Association or reach out to me and I'll get you in touch uh, with Tim Doyle. And, uh, you know, you know, we hope to make, by the way, we, we hope to, well, we have our first council um, meeting next week. We haven't selected people yet, <laughs> um, but we will select people. We have a meeting actually later today, and I'm sure we'll meet again next week too, but we hope to make a selection relatively quickly. So if you're interested, raise your hands and email, uh, you know, the Tim or myself, and you can reach me at dries at batard.net. First name at last name.net. Yeah, and uh, we are 25 minutes over now, and I think some of us need to go to other meetings. Yeah. Uh, I hope that we answered a lot of your questions. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to all of them, but... But we will capture all the questions, and um, we are making a a list of all the questions, and we, we will also talk about how do we get answers to these questions out to the world, and not just to the people that were here. Um, so stay tuned for more on that, but... um. I do love all the enthusiasm and all the questions. It's amazing. Um, feel free to send me feedback on the call too. Like, uh, you know, we're kind of going fast and putting slides together quickly and showing work in progress. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if you have suggestions or feedback, by all means, reach out to any one of us and we'll try to incorporate your feedback. But um, our plan is to keep it up, keep going. Thank you all. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Bye-bye.